Hola, my people. Hope you guys are doing amazing. My name is Nestor Vargas, and I am your host. Thank you so much for listening. If you are new to this show, this show is all about resources to help you succeed, avoid low paying jobs, build generational wealth, and attain the American dream. So, thank you so much for listening. I have an amazing episode in store for you. Let's get it started. Hey, hey, everyone. I hope you guys are doing amazing. This episode is going to be completely different than any other episode you have heard up to now. This is kind of a raw moment for me. I wanted to take this moment to talk a little bit more about what's on my mind, uh, tell you a little bit more about what I've been doing, and share with you some thoughts about the current environment of the stock market. So let me start with a statistic. 62 million is a number that I want to share with you. And that's a huge number, right? That is the number of Latinos here in the United States. So we are here and uh, we are here to stay. Now, what is more captivating is that when we take a look at 62 million of Latinos, there's basically is, there's a lot of opportunity there's a lot of opportunity for us to help our community. There is a lot of opportunity for our community to continue to rise, uh, to make our country stronger. And so I want to share a few more statistics with you. Uh, so this episode is going to be a little bit about a statistic about our Latino community, then talking to you a little bit more about what I have been up to to better myself, and hopefully you get some inspiration from that. And then again, we'll talk a little bit more about the current environment of the stock market. The reason I like to talk about that is because I'm a financial advisor as well. I've been doing this for 12 years. I have clients who I advise. And so, you know, I know what I'm talking about and I can share some best practices with you. Of course, uh, everything that I say here is educational in nature uh, and it's not considered investment advice. Um, so just wanted to always to throw that out there. So again, going back to our Latino community, 62 million crazy amount of people. You're not alone. There's There are other Latinos out there. However, when we take a look at how much we're getting paid, we're only getting paid 73 cents for every dollar uh, a white male is getting paid for. So, you know, obviously this, this is not just a Latino thing. This is also a female thing. This is also an African-American thing. But just know, I'm telling you this is because I want you to know that you can walk into your boss's office right now and ask for a raise. I'll give you an example. When I was working back in the days, I was working at Fidelity Investments and I had been working there for maybe four years. I went into uh, kind of my annual review with my manager and he's like, hey, we're going to give you this raise. It's going to be like six or seven thousand dollars more a year. And I was like, wow, super excited, right? Super grateful that I had done my job and I had done this, my job well. So I go out there and my buddy is looking at me and he's like, well, well, why are you so excited? What's going on? I told him how much I had gotten, you know, a raise for and we kind of compare salaries and he looked at me and he's like, oh, I've been making that this whole time. (laughs) Uh, So, you know, just, just know that that's, that absolutely is happening. And we were doing the same job. We were performing at the same level. Uh, So, so let me encourage you to ask for a raise, Uh, do it now. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Now, uh, that's one thing is, is our, our, our um, kind of our pay. So if you're a Latino and you're stuck in a job that you hate, um, or even if you're not Latino and you're wondering how, you know, is, where's the opportunity? Hey, Latinos, right? Uh, so just know that there's $660 billion a year, a year of unmet demand in Latino uh, products and services that are just not out there. So how how can you how can you help? Well, go online uh, and and research Latino consumption, Latino products. Talk to your Latino friends. Talk to your family members if you're Latino. Figure out what is there, what is the demand that's not being met, uh, and how can you fill that demand uh, as well. Right now, we make about seventeen. We make up about seventeen percent of our uh, of the U.S labor force by 2060 is going to be 30 percent i tell you that because sometimes we might feel a little lonely Uh, we might feel like we're the only latinos in a room Uh, i know sometimes i feel like that especially living here in colorado don't get wrong i love um you know the community that i have around um but it's just 
that's just the, that's just the 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 setup here um, where I live. Uh, it's a lot of Caucasian uh, individuals, which I love. My wife's Caucasian, so hey, <laughs> I've got nothing wrong against white people. But yeah, so just just know that 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 we're around. That there there, there are sixty two million of us. Don't feel alone. Reach out to other Latinos. Figure out what they're doing. Let's build our community up because that's really going to help. Uh, that's really going to help everyone. Okay, so uh, those are some of the statistics that I wanted to share with you today about our Latino community. Then I want to share with you uh, what's been going on with me. So I talked about 62 million people, and that's really a statistic that has been top of mind for me. I feel very lucky to be where I am in the position that I am. Uh, to be an owner of a company that really provides an amazing lifestyle for me. But I also know that there's a lot of our Latino friends that are maybe stuck in low-paying jobs, not creating generational wealth. And actually, that's another statistic that I wanted to share with you guys here. Okay, so the Latino wealth is an, an, an upward tra trajectory, which is amazing, but there's still a lot of ground to cover. So uh, the total net worth of a Latino or Latina is much lower than our white friends, and I'll tell you why. So the median net worth, meaning how much we own, um, is only about $36,000 for Latinos. When compared to that of non-Latino white families, it's almost five times that, closer to $200,000. And what, uh, what the research shows is that, that it's because we're starting at a much lower base, and there's no generational wealth transfer. So uh, there, th we're not inheriting anything from our parents or our grandparents. And so that's really helped making it difficult for, for us as Latinos to continue to grow our, our community. The other thing is that there's only about 5% of you guys are using the stock market. Please, please, please stop. Stop. Okay. Start using the stock market. Stop putting your money under the mattress or put it in 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 in, in cash uh, this is not mexico this is not colombia this is not one of our countries where we can't trust the banking system this is the united states of america guys we have to start investing in other companies in the stock market and we'll talk more about that uh, later in uh in, in future episodes but those are the things right so um that's that's what's been really on top of my mind it's like okay well, we have this amazing opportunity to generate wealth, and I'm in a position to be able to help out. And so what I wanted to share with you, some of the steps that I've been taking uh, to better myself and also to be able to help you to really reach your, your goals and your dreams. One of the things that I, I wanted to share with you is this mindset has really been transformational for me it's called who not how who not how this is a book by dr benjamin hardy and dan sullivan two amazing individuals highly highly successful individuals uh but just really nice people and you know one of the things that they talk about is that if you're going to reach your goals or if you want to start something that that you have an idea about but you don't know how to do, instead of asking yourself, how do I do this, start asking yourself, instead ask yourself, who? Who can help me do this? Why? Because you may be able to figure out all the pieces of getting a project done, but it's going to take you way much longer. You're You're killing brain cells. And, and you're not squeezing the most out of really your potential when you're wasting your time trying to learn new skill sets to accomplish a particular goal. So, for example, for me, when I launched this podcast, I had no idea how to podcast. I, know I, I had no idea how to do anything. And so I started asking myself, well, I don't want to know how I do these things. Who do I contact to help me out? And so the first kind of step iteration of that was getting a sound person to set up my podcast, put it all on, on all the podcasting uh, media platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That person also taught me how to use the software, and that person 
also uh, does the sound edits and all of that good stuff. And so that was one step. It's like I, I knew I had this amazing just idea of being able to create a podcast where I can, you know, talk to my community uh, and really share best ideas and, and really lift you up. I didn't know how to do it. Instead of asking myself, how do I do this? I went and got someone to help me out. And so the next iteration was, okay, well, I did a few episodes and I was, I was taking about four to five hours in kind of rewriting some of the episodes. And I said, this is crazy. This is going to take me too long. This is obviously not my zone of genius. Um, so I said, okay, I, I need a writer. I need someone who is a copywriter uh, who knows what he's doing or she is doing to help me out. And so I hired a copywriter. And so some of the interviews you'll hear where I'm narrating the interview instead of actually just playing the interview itself. Uh, that's not me just creating that narration. It's a, it's a collaboration with this copywriter who's really uh, helping me tell the story in a much better way. And so how, you know, who can you approach to help you accomplish your goals? Right? If you're in corporate America, what resources do you have around you uh, to help you get there quicker? Instead of you learning and who, who can help you? Um, and then if you're a business owner, gosh, there, there's just so many opportunities to who thinks instead of how things uh, that has been just transformational for me. The other thing that I um, currently did is that I hired uh, Hannah. Hannah lives down in Argentina, but she's going to be great with uh, social media uh, design. And so she's going to be really helping the podcast uh, be reached by uh, creating better social media platforms, getting the podcast on YouTube, uh, and all those great things. Kind of, you know, I'm pretty confident that I could have figured all that stuff out, but that's not my zone of genius. My zone of genius is really figuring out content that I can bring to the table and really helping you guys grow. So that's another who who I've hired to help me with social media, to help me with the YouTube, uh, and to help me really manage the podcast so I can have more bandwidth to really figure out ways to, to improve uh, our community. I also, uh, you know, have hired, hired a coach. His name is Harry Lopez. Uh, he's down in Miami. Uh, we're just really in the early stages of getting things started. But I'm really excited about this collaboration that I'm going to have with him. And the reason that I did this collaboration was because I want this podcast to really reach an audience. My my one year goal is for this podcast to be downloaded five thousand times per episode, and so that's an audacious goal. It's a crazy goal, which we'll talk a little bit more about uh, in a second of why I create this this goals that are just really reaching for the moon and how that really changes your mindset in in a, in a great way. But I have no idea how I'm going to get there, right? <laughs> and so instead of me really trying to do all this research and talk to all these people. I've hired a coach who has a proven track record of helping people uh, create those amazing online businesses, including podcasts. And that's going to be the who, right? He is going to help me get to my goal. And so um, who, not how, is a mindset that I want to challenge you to start uh, integrating in your life. There's the book, uh, Who, Not How. Please read that book. It's an amazing, amazing book. It'll change your life. All righty. So I talked about this mindset of having uh, this audacious goals. And it, it's something new for me. It took me a really long time to actually feel confident and comfortable in saying this, cra saying this crazy goals out loud. But if you really think about it, if you want to maybe just double your audience or double the output that you're accomplishing it doesn't require a lot of creativity. It's just, it's hard. It's actually harder to double what you're doing than actually do it 10 times uh, faster or get 10 times the listeners. That mindset of, of 10x versus, excuse me, 2x, 2x in something versus 10x is something, it, it's completely different. So it's, it's, it's harder to 10x something because doubling something requires you to work harder and longer hours. And, and that gives you that kind of incremental uh, 
incremental output. But if you're trying to 10x something, so for right now, I'm just going to give you an example or the past two months, we've had about 310 downloads to this podcast, which by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it, it, it's actually doing great. It's doing great. But I want 5,000 downloads uh, on a monthly, uh, per episode. I have to think completely different about what I'm doing, right? I have to be, I have to stop doing the stuff that I'm doing now and doing th- different things that are going to get you there. So the 10x thinking requires you to think outside the box, use different resources, and um, and really accelerate that growth. And so that's why that's where Harry's coming into play. That's where Hannah's coming into play to really help me catapult our our uh, success. Now, it's really important for me for this podcast to continue to grow because I certainly want to reach a broader audience. I want to make sure the message is getting out. So we need more listeners. But also, you know, the podcast needs to uh, turn a profit at some point in time in order for me to continue to uh, you know, spend my time and resources with this. And so those are those are all the reasons, right? Uh, twofold, I definitely want the community to hear what I have to say. I work really hard. I bring in amazing content to you, amazing stories. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it obviously, anything that we do, we, we want to make sure that we're balancing our passions with monetary rewards as well. They go hand in hand. So that's from a business perspective, what I've been doing. Besides me wearing this hat of being the host of Green Cards to Greenbacks, I'm also an owner of a firm called Green Mountain Planning, where I really simplify the retirement process for individuals. And uh, there, I'm also who, not howing. I've had uh, someone helping me over the past five months since May. His name is Colt. He was just going to be an intern for the summer. Uh, He liked working with me so much that he decided to stay uh, working part-time while he finishes his last year of college. And so he's doing a lot of the things that uh, typically would slow me down in the practice and is freeing up that time for me to work on this project and really continue to think critically about how I'm going to grow the financial practice, how I'm going to grow the podcast. And so one of the things that has been also kind of really critical for me is, is creating space in my calendar. And that is because coming from corporate America, if your calendar is open, you're not doing work, right? You, you may get fired. And that's just really a terrible way to live life. I think, you know, don't get me started on, on corporate America and all that stuff. Um, but really feeling comfortable with Having a calendar that is not super busy has been uh, game changing and very difficult for me. But, you know, I heard this quote that really stuck with me, and it was this a full calendar equals an empty life. A full calendar equals an empty life. And that's so true. If your calendar is full, you have no time for your family, you have no time for your health, and you have no time for you. And that's just no way to live, friends. No way to live. So I've really been trying to get this who's around me to create more space in my calendar to be able to create a life that is, um, excuse me, to create an, an income stream that surrounds my life, right? Not the other way around, which we're all taught by just our society. First comes our job, this is our focus, our nucleus, and then our family and everything else is around. And that's just completely, that's BS, right? Like We we know it, but we're stuck. And and mentally, uh, everyone else around us feels and acts the same way. So we don't, you know, we don't, we don't want to do something different. But, but I encourage you to really think differently, right? We live in an amazing, amazing country full of opportunity. Look, if a seven-year-old who didn't speak any English was able to come to the United States and create what I've created, we, we, you can do it. You can do it as well. Uh, and I'm talking about that seven-year-old, which is me, by the way. So that's what I've been up to from a business perspective. Another top goal for me is health. And so I've been using this new uh, amazing tool called uh, – it's, it's a company called Level Health, Levels Health. And it's actually a continuous glucose monitor that is – 
insert it in my arm. It doesn't hurt at all. I was actually shocked. Uh, and it tracks my glucose levels. And the reason I did that is because I was going home and around 3.30 or 4 o'clock, I was crashing. I mean, I was just super low energy. And this has been happening for a while. And I'm like, I've got two kids at home. I got to have energy. And I was like, I, I got to figure something else out. So I started tracking my glucose levels and it's been transformational for me as well. It's, it's crazy to see how, how uh, simple carbs were impacting my, my uh, energy levels. So I was seeing when I, when I ate carbs, um, my glucose levels would shoot up and then they would just crash. And sure enough, around 2.30 or 3 o'clock, uh, that's when things were happening. And so it, was, it is really amazing to see how immediate – uh, feedback can can change your behavior. I immediately have changed my behavior in terms of what I eat, low carbs, uh, high protein diets, really give me that energy that I need, uh, not only for my family, for, for but for you guys to be able to create amazing content. And then I also have been uh, getting back to the gym and all that good stuff. Uh, we took a little break after having a baby. Uh, that always, always obviously throws you off schedule, but that's been really... Uh, Amazing, uh, an amazing experience, uh, really honing in on my diet and understanding that my body needs to be fed well, that I need to treat it well in order to, to really be there for my family, for my listeners, and for really everything that I want to accomplish. All righty, so we've talked a little bit about some statistics about the Latino community, uh, some great opportunities there for us to really help each other out, help our Latino community I've talked a little bit about, I've talked about who, not how. I also have talked about why it's important to actually have free space on your calendar. I've also talked about, you know, a little bit about my health and giving you some ideas. So hopefully that helps you out. Then let's talk a little bit, let's talk about the stock market. And, you know, there's two typical investors. There are the investors who are in the accumulation phase, meaning that you're still saving for retirement or for whatever goal you're looking to accomplish. And then there are those that are in the decumulation phase, which have saved up and now are living off of the assets. And so the mindsets uh, are, are different, uh, but you know, we still basically feel the same pain uh, when we see our statements go down in value. Actually, there's a study out there where Basically, the study says that we as human beings feel twice the pain of uh, losing something than we feel as gaining something. And the study, actually, I looked into this a little farther, and the study was, was done with uh, two monkeys. They had two different monkeys on, in different cages, and they gave, they gave a monkey a banana, and uh, the monkey was, like, super happy, right? Like, oh, I got this banana, super happy. And then the other monkey, they gave him two bananas, but they took one away. And that monkey was pissed. I mean, he was going crazy in this cage. No difference, right? One monkey had one banana. The other monkey had one banana at the end. But that other monkey had the other second banana taken away, and he just could not, could not accept it. Now, I'm not calling you a monkey, <laughs> but we do share a huge amount of DNA with these animals. And um, the way that we behave is very similar uh, you know, from, from a cognitive perspective. So I say that because right now, you know, there's barely anyone who is making money in the stock market this year. You know, the S&P is down, I think, 15, 16% this year. So the first thing I want to ask you is, do you have a monitoring strategy or an observation strategy when you look at your investments? And what I mean by that is, if all you're doing is looking at your statements or going online and seeing is, is my account up or down and that's how you're judging your investments, you've got a lot of work to do because you don't understand what you own and you probably have picked this investments solely by, by looking at their past returns. And when there's no positive returns, then, then there's no really basis for you to feel comfortable with. 
But when you have a monitoring process, you actually have taken the steps to do the research necessary with those investments, make sure you have the proper investments to meet your financial goals and your time horizon. So you're feeling uncomfortable with your investments. First, you have to figure out if you actually know what you own. And if you don't, talk to someone. Uh, talk to a financial advisor. Talk to maybe the company who holds your 401k. Uh, they, they can help you out. But the other thing that I want to tell you is that if you're invested in a well-invested portfolio, well-diversified portfolio, which again, I'll talk about this more in the future, um, there's nothing to worry about. And also, I'm, I'm, I'm making an assumption that you have put money that is not going to be needed in the next year or two in the, in the stock market. Don't invest anything that is, has less than a two-year time frame in the stock market because we never know what the stock market is going to do in that short term. We, we know with a high level of certainty that the stock market, a well-diversified diversified portfolio, is going to grow. So if you're well-diversified, you have a time frame. At this moment, I would say four or five years. Don't panic, okay, if, if, you're, growing, if you're growing your money. Okay, if you're growing your money, you still have time in, uh, ahead of you. Now, if you're in the decumulation phase of the of the environment uh, of the investing world, then it's different, right? You might be saying, "Well, I don't have the time, Nestor." Well, you actually do. Uh, I'm hoping that you're not gonna die tomorrow or the next year. Typically, retirement is 20 or 30 years. You do have the time, but what you shouldn't uh, have to feel like is having to just trust that the stock market's going to be okay, you definitely ha need to have some safety measures in place to understand at which point in time, at which point in time do you need to make a change in your, in your, in your uh, investment process or even in the amount of money you're taking out. And so with my clients, we use something called a guardrails. And so guardrails, uh, if you think about going up the road, you know, a, a windy road. There's guardrails on each side for a reason, so you don't you know fall off. Um, the guardrails are basically in an income strategy. Is they're there to help you understand at which point, you know, at what level do you need to change your income? So let's say you've got a five hundred thousand dollar portfolio, and based on a bunch of different things, your age, your time frame, your risk appetite, your investments, all different things. There's a certain level at which point in time you need to lower your income until the market comes back up. And so vice versa, if a market continues to increase, at some point you are able to give yourself an increase because if you don't do that, then you're going to end up dying with a bunch of money and, and maybe you didn't want to do that, right? Maybe you, wanna, you wanted to be someone who wanted to enjoy life. So the guardrails give you the ability to know when you can give yourself a raise and know when you actually need to back off a little bit and by what amount uh, you need to back off to make sure you don't run out of money and be able to you know, uh, write out this, this current environment. So if you're working, if you are taking money out of your portfolio and you're not working with a financial advisor who uses guardrails, who can tell you exactly at which point in time in your portfolio we need to lower your income and buy how much, or when can we give you an raise and buy how much? Uh, talk to them. Say, hey, can, can can you can you give me some income guardrails? I'd really like to really better understand guardrails. Uh, and if that person is not able to do that, then then look for another financial advisor because because you deserve it. You deserve that. It's going to help you make better decisions. All right, my friends. Well, that's that's where I am right now. That's the state of the union for Nestor and Greenbacks, uh, green cards to greenbacks. I uh, really love you guys. I, I appreciate you listening into the show, supporting the show. Make sure you sign up for the newsletters. Just go to greencards to greenbacks .com. There's a blue button there on the landing page that you know you can easily put your information in there. I am not going to spam you. I'm not going to fill up your inbox. I, at the moment, feel like maybe we'll be sending out uh, one email uh, a week at the most. And that is me basically telling you some things that I'm trying out, uh, things that I'm doing, or resources for you to be able to you know, continue to follow your journey to, to success. And whatever success means to you, obviously, it's different for everyone. So I hope this is helpful. Please share feedback 
I'm looking for feedback. I want to make this show better. This show is for you. It's not for me. So let me know what you want to hear. Feel free to email me directly at Nestor, N-E-S-T-O-R, Nestor, at greencards2greenbacks.com. Until then, we'll talk soon, my friends. Adios, nos vemos. Let's go make those greenbacks. Bye.